the long-distance telephone network are millions of these little crystals, each covered with a film of gold hardly a millionth of an inch thick. Like shining glass dominoes, shaped with mathematical precision and set in special mountings with infinite care and skill, they stand like traffic policemen directing the path of your call. Hundreds of conversations are often going over one telephone line at the same time. Without crystals, these calls would be jumbled together in a meaningless double talk. With these crystals, your call is kept on its own path and your voice is heard distinctly at the distant telephone. Yes, modern science has given new meaning to the ancient phrase, crystal clear. The natural source of crystals is quartz, highly esteemed since ancient times for its beauty. But in these modern times, quartz is esteemed for use as well as for beauty. The kind of quartz needed in telephony is rarely found except in far off Brazil, where nature has taken thousands of years to grow it. Here at home, man-made crystals are grown in a few months' time. When you press a quartz plate with your fingers or twist it, you deform it slightly. This generates electricity. It is called piezoelectricity from the Greek word piezo, meaning to press. But nature's supply of quartz is limited, and for many years scientists have experimented with man-made crystals. Some of these synthetic crystals generate electricity, but are unsatisfactory in other ways. Ammonium dihydrogen phosphate, alias ADP for instance, was grown during the war for use in submarine detecting devices. Crystals of Rochelle salt, when struck with a hammer, give enough voltage and current to light a neon lamp. When an electric current is applied to a quartz crystal plate, it will vibrate. But the ADP and Rochelle salt crystals do not meet the specifications for traffic policemen in telephone circuits. After a long search, the scientists of the Bell Telephone Laboratories found a way to grow a new substitute for quartz that would do the job. It is called EDT and is grown from a supersaturated solution of its salt in water. EDT is short for ethylene diamine tartrate. It was discovered in France in 1892, but remained a laboratory curiosity until the telephone scientists found that it had the piezoelectric properties they were looking for. The solution in which the crystals are grown is being prepared here in a large jar. The ingredients are mixed with great care and temperature is watched closely. Seeds must first be grown. As the liquid slowly cools, small clear needles are deposited. After about a week, the surface is covered with a crust of crystals. Some grow down into the liquid. Some cluster on the side of the jar. Many more grow up from the mass of crystals formed in the bottom. Seeds may be grown also by inserting a cold metal tube in the hot liquid. Beautiful seed clusters form on the tube. From seeds like this, large crystals are grown. All we need is the cap end. This is first cut off. The remainder is of no value and is discarded. When the cap seed is placed in a supersaturated solution at or near room temperature, it grows a great deal in length, but only a little in width. The lengthwise growth is almost entirely on one end. The other, so-called butt end, simply fills out to the natural faces and stops growing. The yellow lines indicate the gradual width increase as the bar lengthens. The newly formed cap is cut off and used for growing a still larger crystal. The remainder is discarded. The cap is again placed in a supersaturated solution near room temperature and grown into a new bar. The yellow lines indicate, as before, how the growing cap end widens a little while the crystal bar lengthens considerably. The cap is again cut off, the remainder discarded. This larger cap provides the necessary seed for a new bar. These sketches are only an outline of the work needed to develop a bar of useful dimensions. Actually, many more operations than those indicated by the sketches 
are required to progress from a small spontaneous seed to a large bar of more than one inch in cross-section. In this series, the smaller units grew in about one month, whereas the larger ones took as long as three months to grow. A number of useful pieces may be cut from a large, perfect bar. The cap is the best seed for growing another bar. The inner cap, the seed from which the bar was grown, may be cut out and used again. The butt end also is seed material, but only to form another cap on its cut face. The cap thus grown may be cut off and used as a bar seed. Plates may perform the same function as butt ends in growing new caps, but the main purpose of plates is to act as filters or traffic policemen in the telephone circuits. Only the fishtail is waste. The seeds are mounted on a rotating support rod to which are attached stainless steel pins. The spider containing 12 seeds is suspended through a hole in the lid and fastened to a coupling on a motor drive shaft. Once more, a growing solution is carefully prepared. Growth is first noted by a frosty appearance of the rounded edges, then by an opaque appearance of the vertical face. The growing goes on at about 1 32nd of an inch per day as the temperature is systematically dropped. The series of jumps are due to photographing the crystal every few days. In about three months, the crystals are fully grown. As the crystals are harvested, they are handled as little as possible, for at this stage, even a slight temperature change will cause cracks in the clear crystal. You have seen the laboratory methods by which crystals are grown. But when millions must be fitted into the telephone networks every year, machines must be designed and people trained to produce them in great quantity. This is the job of Western Electric Company, the Bell Systems manufacturing unit, whose work with crystals is a story in itself. It is a story like many others in the long history of telephone progress, where patient research and precision manufacture work together to provide clear and unobstructed pathways for the voice. <laughs>